There are three ley line disruptors buried in the area around Aru village. These devices can imitate the effects of ley line disruption and will constantly interfere with the environment. Your goal is to shut them down. Didn't I ask you if you were all right before this? If you had just decided to withdraw then, you wouldn't have had to suffer. Well, I had to try, didn't I? So I tried, and it didn't work out. And now I'm backing out while I can. When I get back, I'm definitely going to make a batch of sun-resistant oil. Next time I venture into the desert, I'll be prepared. Kabe, is this flying metal thingy yours? <sighs> That's right. This is my toolbox, Merak. Your toolbox? Fucking racist. Genshin Impact. We're continuing on with the event story. The bonds of yesterday will forge the road to tomorrow. With the ties of friendship that bind us, I won't lose to anyone. What the hell are you bringing this out of? What are you doing? Man, no wonder you're so cringe. That's a line from King of Invocations, one of my favorite works, and it sums up my thoughts right now. <laughs> Tainari isn't here, or else he'd give Sino a good smack right about now. Well, that's Sino. Oh, wow. It's already so late. Everyone's probably running low on food and water. It'll only get harder from here on out. Something similar happened in King of Invocations. <sighs> what a classic. Shut up. Any thoughts on that, Alhatham? Mm. I have no thoughts regarding King of Invocations. Wasn't asking about that. Deserts are much more dangerous at night, so this competition should be nearing its end. At the moment, only Farazan, Layla, and Kave remain. I wonder who the next person to find a disruptor will be. Wait, only three people are left? Tainari forfeited, and Sino's already done. What about Hat Guy? He also forfeited not long ago. Ugh. Paimon can't understand what he's thinking at all. Don't even worry about him. God. Like, like all hate them said, this round's almost over. Let's go see what the other contestants are doing. Wait, who gives a fuck about that guy? I'm so irritated. Things are really heating up now. You can feel the contestants' passion too, can't you all hate them? Compared to the abstraction of human emotions, the desert heat is easier to intuit. Tainari made the right decision to forfeit. I don't... they haven't moved, so we just go to the Leila. Is she still down there, or is that up? I can't... Oh no, she's passed out. Oh no, wait, she's awake. <laughs> From the angle I was running, I thought she was, like, weighing down in some way. Again, you know, it suddenly occurred to me that you guys have had to do a lot of running around this time. Don't you find it tiring? A little. Well, in that case, let's take a short breather here. The desert's getting colder now that night's falling, and the wind can really sting your face because of all the sand in it. Uh, has anyone finished this round yet? Sino's already shut one down. Have you made any progress yet? I circled the whole area, but I didn't find anything. But I did have the chance to think some more about that thing that was weighing on my mind, and I realized something. 
And what was that? Well, my fellow Ritalahist members must have all put my name forward for different reasons. And maybe a lot of them only picked me because they wanted to watch me make a fool of myself. But be that as it may, I believe that a lot of them genuinely do expect great things from me. And I want to live up to their expectations. Uh, I don't want them to regret putting my name down. Huh? But doesn't thinking like that put a lot of pressure on you? Uh, of course, that comes with some amount of pressure for sure. But now I've thought about it, I don't feel like this is something I have to do. Instead, it's something I want to do. That may not sound like a huge difference to you, but it's helped me relax a lot. <sighs> so don't worry about me. Well, that's great! Also, now that I've relaxed, I'm suddenly really sleepy. Uh, I think I'll just take a quick nap. Just a quick one. We well, can't. It's time for other way. What? Hmm. Uh, but the competition isn't over yet. Uh, oh, Layla, Layla, she's really a bundle of nerves, isn't she? Wait, you're. Other way, uh, Good to see you too. Ooh, it's nice to be out. Feels like I've been cooped up inside for quite a while. Well, since I'm here, I guess I should help her finish this. What are we supposed to be doing here again? Finding a ley line disruptor, was it? Let me see... Hmm... Looks like she's basically gathered all the information she needs. Ah, oh, it won't take long to wrap this up. Come with me, you two. Okay... Do you ever get the feeling that the Lelines have a regular flow? Similar to the way that celestial bodies follow fixed orbits. If we were looking down from on high, I wonder whether we'd find that the Lelines are just the reflections of the stars upon the Earth. Not all astrological phenomena can be directly observed. Some are deductions based on other details that we know. It's the same situation with the Lelines. The parts of them that are hidden underground can be identified via elemental energy, sound, and other phenomena. Plus, now that someone has shut one of the disruptors down, the contrast between before and after can provide me with further information still. Uh, let me see. It should be here, I think. You mean right there? Oh my god, of course it is. Ha! Ah, this should be it, right? I'll turn it off. That should restore the ley lines in the area to normal. Nice work! Again, I didn't do any of the real work. I'm just wrapping up. She'll probably wake up soon. No doubt she'll be a little disoriented at first, but once she's got her bearings, she'll go and report that she shut down this disruptor. <sighs> Will you be staying here for a while? Or are you going to check on the other contestants? Oh, time to check our locator. Whoa, it looks like Kave and Farozan are headed towards the same place. Perhaps they're about to find the last disruptor. Also, speaking of Kave, he's an interesting one. Huh? Why do you say that? Before the second round, he had a chat with the other me. He said that worries can be like illnesses. They don't always have a magic cure. Sometimes you just have to endure them as best you can until they run their course. But the way I see it, his situation is much worse than my other selves. She just hadn't found what she wanted to do at the moment, which is why she felt lost. Kave, meanwhile, knows what he wants to do. He's convinced that he has to win, and yet, he still seems conflicted. He doesn't have a second personality, but somehow he still seems that he's at odds with himself in some way. Uh, I don't know exactly how to describe it. It's like he's smiling on the outside, but there's no joy inside, only sorrow. Still, who knows? He must be more experienced than me. Maybe he's just better at dealing with it all than I am. Hmm. Uh, oh, but back to the topic of wrapping up. Shouldn't you be getting back to the action to record how everything plays out? Last one, then the round's over. Oh, true. 
Okay, then. Guess we'll be going now. We'll keep everything you said in mind. Kobe and Barozan were super confident at the start, but it turns out that... Just stop talking. I don't like you either, Paimon, so just don't talk. You don't know nothing about being quick. Uh. Oh, they're up there. Is that up or is that... Wait, hold on. Huh, I think they're up. Come on, man. It should be around here. Finally found it. Coffee? Are you? Oh, Madam Faruzan. And here I thought you would have finished this round by now. I didn't expect that you and I would find a disruptor at the same time. How are the other contestants doing? Tainari and Hat Guy forfeited, while Sino and Layla are already done. You two are the only ones left. Uh, huh? That's weird. Didn't you start digging really early on? Yes, I kept digging, but instead of finding a disruptor, I found a ruin. I fell down pretty deep, and it was completely dark in there. It took me quite some time to unlock the various mechanisms and return to the surface. Geez, she almost had a re a repeat of her past. That's actually really impressive. Finishing a week's worth of trials in such a short time. <laughs> That's pretty amazing, Madam Farozan. What about you? Why are you so late? I encountered a lot of lost desert foxes along the way, and I brought them to the outskirts of the competition zone. When I came back, I was absolutely parched. And then I blacked out. Probably from the heat, you know? When I woke up, it was already night. I used the last of my strength to come here. The most curious reason indeed. Ah, uh, but are you sure you're all right? It sounds like you were in an incredibly dangerous situation. You said you were familiar with the desert. But the way you handle problems... It does feel rather at odds with your title as a genius. <laughs> it was problematic, but that had nothing to do with me being a genius. It was my decision. The way I did things wasn't optimal, but I wouldn't have been comfortable not doing it either. My conscience would have weighed on me. <laughs> Youths these days. Each stranger than the next. But back to the main issue at hand. Since we are both very certain that this is where the final Leyline Disruptor is, let's dig it up then. Well, this is indeed it. Of that there is no doubt. But how shall we count the score this time? <sighs> what is it, youngster? You seem relieved. Oh, nothing. I was just thinking that this round's finally over. There shouldn't be any more innocent creatures getting wrapped up in danger. As for the points, I guess we can draw lots again later. I can't think of anything better. All right. In that case, let's all head back to Aru Village. Paimon thinks you'll both need some water and rest. Man, ain't it just something fun? I was about to say, I thought they wanted me to go back to a specific entrance or something. Now, with how big this TV is, I really have just gotten used to sitting much farther away from it. Looks like the second round is over. I wonder who is faster, Kabe or Madame Farzan? Huh? Where's Madame Farzan? She went to get water. She'll be back shortly. We basically arrived at the same time, so we'd like to draw lots again. <sighs> you get caught up in something so easily, like drawing lots. I'm not caught up in anything! Don't make it sound like I take pleasure in having bad luck! Really? Then should I say that you have a curious affinity for drawing lots? Um, I'll go get the box and slips of paper for the lots. Please wait a moment. Oh, here we go again. 
Let's see how I fare. I got it! Did you see that? I won! Congratulations! Looks like Kaveh's luck's taking a turn for the better! She lost on purpose. Oh, finally! After all this time! <gasps> it looks like you've been rewarded for your tribulations in the desert. This round's points are yours. <laughs> and with that, our second round is done. Sino, Layla, and Kaveh are our victorious contestants. As for the current standings, let me see. Sino and Layla both have four points, putting them both in first place. The rest in descending order are Tainari, Farazan, Kaveh, and Hakai. The next round will be the final one. Please rest up before then, everyone. I heard that some stalls at the Wisdom Gala are debuting new games, so feel free to drop by if you're interested. Otherwise, see you next round. New games? We already played those reindeer games, so we have no more to play. Huh? Not done. Are you fu- Okay. So you want me to waste my time? For no reason. You want me to waste my time? Come well, on, sure as shit, think not. It feels like something's been on your mind this entire time. That white haired man I saw before the competition started. Traveler, Paimon. I finally found you. Finally? Did something happen? Don't you feel like there's something off about this year's academia extravaganza? When Candace and I were at the cafe earlier, we might have caught sight of some mercs on business. Thing is, they were disguised as tourists here to shop, but no disguise can mask the stench of blood. Just from their suspicious looks, I bet they do dirty work like kidnapping or assassinations. We eavesdropped on them for a while. Their target seems to be someone called Sachin. Sachin? Isn't that the person who Karina mentioned during the opening ceremony? He's apparently the sponsor behind the competition prizes and the diadem of knowledge, but he hasn't shown himself at all. <sighs> Sounds like a rich person, all right. It makes sense now. The Aramites have been struggling to make ends meet recently, so a lot of groups have been doing private work that involves the rich. In their words, one gig sets you up for half a year. Just one job like this nets them enough mora to take it easy for a while. The extravaganza has brought many tourists to Sumeru City all at once. So it's likely that they took advantage of the bustle to sneak in. Dia and I wanted to directly capture them, but they were on guard and made some excuse to slip away. I would have tied them up if it wouldn't have caused a scene. Who's legally supposed to take care of this kind of thing? The Matra or the Corps of Thirty? If Sino were here, he'd definitely get involved. <gasps> Why don't we head over to the Academia and tell a mantra? Thanks a million, you two. Not at all. It was coincidence on our part as well. Yeah, don't sweat it. The Aramite's reputation is gonna get even worse if these scumbags succeed. Hmm, but this is Sumeru City. Candace and I don't have as much freedom to act here, so we're leaving this in your hands. Should you require our aid, come find us at the cafe. that something's bucking you. Is it the extravaganza? Cause Paimon's starting to think that there's more than meets the eye here too. Ugh. But thinking like this isn't doing anything. Hmm. Let's just go find a matra. Yay, the seriousness is happening. Hello, both. It's been a while. Do you have any issues to report? Someone's planning to kidnap Sachin. Goodness. Though I suppose it's not all that surprising. The growing popularity of the extravaganza has given him quite the reputation boost as its sponsor. He's seen as one of these super rich types. Well, since he's got a target on his back now, 
Shouldn't you send some people to protect him? To tell you the truth, we've thought about doing just that. However, Sachin apparently prefers to spend most of his time out doing field work, and hardly ever comes back to Sumeru City. No one has been able to contact him. Our only lead is something he once said. <clears throat> Each time the Interdarshan Championship is held, I will be watching from close by to choose a suitable person to inherit my estate. Assuming he remains committed to that promise, then he must be right here in the city somewhere. I suspect that the Aramites in question must have heard about that as well, and decided to come here and try their luck. So, they shouldn't know where Sachin is either, right? I would assume not. Anyway, Mahamatra Sayano is still on vacation, so I'll handle this. Don't you worry. A couple of kidnappers aren't gonna get very far in Sumeru City these days. I have my ways of forcing them out into the open. All of that said, if you're interested in Sachin's story, why don't you try tracking him down as well? The sooner we ascertain his whereabouts, the quicker we can act to ensure his safety. I mean, you could task all the Matra and the whole Corps of Thirty with someone's protection, but if the client doesn't show themselves, there's nothing we can do to help them. Fair point. Yes, we should start searching for him too, but where should we start? Do the Matra have any information at all on Sachin? None, I'm afraid. He's never committed any crimes or broken academic protocol, so we don't have a very detailed file on him. I've heard that Alhatham has now stepped down from his post as acting Grand Sage and is back to being the scribe again. Maybe it's worth checking to see if he knows anything. Good idea! Okay, we'll head back to the extravaganza venue and see if we can find him. Uh, I don't want to talk to Edge Ward number two. There's Niwu. Yeah. <sighs> hey, Niwu! Have you seen Alhatham anywhere? Alhatham? Why? What is it? We're trying to track down someone and we need him to pull up some records for us. Oh, I see. Sorry, I don't know where he went. He's always the first to leave after the competition ends, and he never tells anyone where he'll be going. Huh. Yeah, actually, that sounds about right for him. Let me think. Um, to be honest, he doesn't seem very interested in the extravaganza, so he probably doesn't stick around longer than he has to. To him, being a commentator is just extra work he was roped into. Do you guys know of any places he'd go after work? Maybe he went home. Oh, maybe. Paima remembers that his house isn't that far from here, so we might as well check it out. I wonder where all Haytham would go. It's you two? Oh, Kabe, you're home! Come on in, I'll get the door for you. We didn't hear a peep when we first knocked. We thought no one was home. Well, I can't be too careful. If someone from the academia came here looking for Alhatham, and I opened the door for them without thinking, before long the whole city would know that I'm living here. Conscientious about this, huh? So, what happens if someone comes inside looking for him while you're at home? It's fine, as long as I stay in my own room. Anyway, why would someone just barge in here looking for him? Most people have better things to do. Nah, fair enough. So do you know where he is at the moment? What do you think? Who knows what he does in his free time? All that matters to me is that he's out of the house. Did you have a quarrel or something? I wouldn't call it that. He's just incapable of saying anything pleasant at all. I told him how the second round went. 
I won the lot draw, remember? Because of good karma, of course. My luck's on the rise, but him, being him... Oh, you wouldn't believe what he said after I was done talking! You're always quick to remind me that you're my upperclassman, and yet you do not problem-solve in the manner becoming of an upperclassman. This begs the question of why we attach prestige to seniority at all. What does he mean, manner becoming of an upperclassman? What, am I supposed to earn the title of upperclassman now? And he didn't stop there. He said, I'd encourage you to reflect on why you've ended up having to rely on luck every round. Frankly, it's incomprehensible to me how you've managed to make it to this age without acknowledging the proverbial elephant in the room of your life. <laughs> yeah, that does sound like something all Haytham would say. Yeah, it pretty much gets on my nerves. I've had it with him. Every time I talk to him, it's the same way. He finds a way to infuriate me every single time. <sighs> anyway, the disdain is very much mutual between us, so I'll be moving out as soon as possible. I'm actually packing my things right now. He'll have to get used to doing his own cleaning and tidying from now on. See those perfectly hung paintings on the walls? They're coming with me too. <laughs> if his life wasn't utterly devoid of artistic sensibility already, it certainly will be after today. Wait. You're moving out already? But the competition isn't even over yet. How can you afford it? Well, obviously I can't just yet. I'm just pecking early to get ahead of the game. I've got my new place picked out already. The moment I have my hands on the prize money, I'm going to buy it and move my things right in. It'll take me three days tops to move out of here for good. I now know what I have to do to achieve this goal. No matter what happens in the third round, I will win. I will emerge triumphant. You'll see. Well, we'll be rooting for you. But are you sure you'll be all right? Hmm? In what way? Layla said that she thinks you'll get caught up in internal conflict. Meaning what exactly? Oh, don't tell me you think I have serious personality flaws too. Oh, we didn't say that. <laughs> but think about it. You say you want to win, but you also turned Faro's on down when she offered to give you her points. Plus, you took it upon yourself to help those desert foxes. Wait, what's so unusual about all that? I gave you my reasons. I would have felt guilty otherwise. Where's the conflict in that? Why would you feel guilty? <sighs> well, when you put it like that... Yes, why indeed? It's a good question. I guess it's just in my nature. Plus, if I just did nothing then there'd be no escaping the blame if something bad came of it later down the line. But thinking like that all the time must make your life so exhausting. Not to mention that by helping out, you put yourself at risk. Fainting in the middle of the desert, for example. Was that really worth it? It's complicated. I... Look, let's maybe leave this conversation for another time. What was it you needed all Haytham's help with, anyway? We'd like to him to help us walk into Sachin. Sachin? Huh. He did actually mention a Sachin recently. I remember he brought a few documents home that day. He was thinking out loud as he looked through them, making some notes and doodling as he went. He even suggested that I should take a look, but I didn't. Uh, give me a moment. Let me go find them. Ah, this is the one. Here, take it. Uh, you sure he'd be okay with this? Huh, with taking liberties? He's certainly okay with helping himself to my beer whenever he pleases. And anyway, he did ask me if I wanted to read his notes. I didn't see the point at the time, so he just left them on the side. He doesn't leave documents lying around unless he's okay with other people reading them. It's fine, I promise. Cool, if you say so. Okay, let's see what he's got on Sachin. I fetched the documents for you. Feel free to look through them at your leisure. And what kind of couches are these? These are beds. How can you have a headache when you don't even have a brain? So, uh, to sum up, Sachin put the academia in charge 
of managing his estate and went off to do research, right? He even said that if he really liked one of the contestants, he wouldn't just give them a reward, but his entire estate as well. Oh, that must be worth heaps and heaps of Mora. What? Are you serious? All of Sachin's wealth, that's... more than I could spend in a lifetime, surely. Heck, if I got chosen, I'd be able to pay off all my debts, then buy a new place, and still have cash to burn. I could build another palace of Alcazar's array, except this time, I'd make it ten times bigger. Oh, then there's that new project in Port Ormos, of course. The bridge renovation. To do it properly would take upwards of... Hey! Hey! Snap out of it! You're getting way ahead of yourself there, mister! Uh, you're right. First, I need to focus on winning and moving out of this place. Huh? Wait a moment. There's a loose slip of paper tucked in between these pages. Did all hate them write this? It looks like he was jotting ideas down as he was thinking things over. Hmm. Let's see. Um... Two phrases have been circled. Sachin, dead or alive, unknown. And diadem of knowledge. Some of this stuff is just plain incomprehensible. Is this written in some other language? Let me see. Huh. I recognize this script. Hmm. Give me a second. You know, am I the only one who's now, like, looking at Kava? Or Kave and the Wumin and being like, man, you would almost think they're related. <clears throat> Lofty ideals may provide no defense at all against nihilism, but perhaps little decisions can. That's a rough translation, anyway. I can't guarantee it's 100% accurate. <laughs> well, apparently, we need to stop the episode, because we got another one to do, right? Cause every night I will save your life, and every night I will be with you. Yeah.